So let's take a look at trigonometric integrals now. In this video, we'll basically be trying to evaluate integrals that involve only trig functions. So for number one, we have the integral of sine cubed x cosine squared x dx. So whenever a trig function is taken to the third power, there's a special way to evaluate. Now sine cubed of x, I can rewrite. So I'm just going to focus on rewriting sine cubed of x. I'm not going to worry about cosine squared right now. So I can rewrite sine cubed of x as sine of x times sine squared of x. So now I keep sine of x here. Now sine squared of x can be rewritten as 1 minus cosine squared of x. So now what I can do is go ahead and distribute over the sine of x. So we get sine of x times 1, which is sine of x minus, and then when I multiply sine of x, we get sine of x times cosine squared of x. So now that we have rewritten sine cubed of x as sine of x minus sine of x times cosine squared, I can go ahead and multiply the entire thing by cosine squared. So then when I multiply or distribute, I'll get sine of x times cosine squared of x, and then minus sine of x times cosine x to the fourth or cosine to the fourth x. So now I can put the entire thing underneath the integral. So the integral, the entire thing, and then we have dx. Since there is a minus sign here, I can go ahead and split it into two different integrals. So the integral of sine of x times cosine squared x dx, and then minus the integral of sine of x times cosine to the fourth x dx. So I'm just going to go ahead and first start by integrating the left integral. So in this problem, we can just use u substitution. So if u is going to be cosine x, then du, or the derivative, will be negative sine x dx. So then isolating dx, dx equals du or negative sine of x. If I go ahead and substitute back into the integral, we get the integral of sine of x times cosine squared. But remember, we made u equal to cosine x. So we basically have sine of x times u squared times dx, which is equal to du over negative sine x. Realize the signs will cancel. And so a negative can come outside the integral as a constant. And we get negative integral of u squared du. So the integral of u squared is going to be u cubed over 3. We do have a negative outside the integral. So we have negative u cubed over 3. So now we can go ahead and substitute back in our u. So we have negative cosine x to the third power over 3. I can also go ahead and rewrite it as negative cosine cubed x over 3. So now let's go ahead and find the integral of sine of x cosine of the fourth x. Same thing here, we can also use u substitution. u is going to be cosine x, so then du is going to be negative sine x dx. If I go ahead and isolate dx, dx will be equal to du over negative sine x. If I go ahead and substitute everything back into the integral, we have the integral of sine x times, I made u equal to cosine x, so we have u to the fourth, du, and du is equal to, or dx is equal to du over negative sine x, so times du over negative sine x. Realize the signs will cancel, negative can come outside the integral as a constant, so we have negative integral of u to the fourth du. Integral of u to the fourth is u to the fifth over five. Once again, we do have a negative, so negative u to the fifth over five. And then I can go ahead and substitute back in the u, which is cosine x once again. So we have negative cosine to the fifth x over 5. So we have found the integral of sine x cosine squared x to be negative cosine cubed x over 3. We do have a minus here, so minus the integral of sine cosine to the fourth, which we have found to be negative cosine to the fifth over 5. So we can say minus a negative cosine to the fifth x over 5. Double negatives will cancel, so the final answer is going to be negative cosine cubed x over 3 plus cosine the fifth x over 5. Since this is an indefinite integral, we can add the plus c. So now for number 2, we have the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of cosine squared theta d theta. So whenever you have the integral of only cosine squared or the integral of only sine squared, you have to use a half angle formula. So the formula for cosine squared of, it can be any variable, x or theta, it doesn't matter. So let's just say cosine squared of theta is going to be equal to 1 plus cosine of 2 theta over 2. And then the formula for sine squared theta is going to be 1 minus cosine of 2 theta over 2. So realize once we put it in this form, it's very easy to integrate. 
And so let's say instead of just cosine squared of theta or sine squared theta, let's say you have cosine squared of three theta. Then in this case, you have one plus cosine of, you're gonna multiply two times three. So then you have cosine of six theta over two. So I'm gonna go ahead and rewrite what's inside the integral. So we have the integral from zero to pi over two. Instead of cosine squared, we're gonna rewrite it as one plus cosine of two theta over two. And we have d theta. And I can go ahead and since this is one half, I can take that outside the integral as a constant. So we have one half times the integral from zero to pi over two of one plus cosine of two theta d theta. Now we have one half times, now the integral of one with respect to theta is just theta. And then plus the integral of cosine of two theta with respect to theta is gonna be one half sine of two theta. And we can go ahead and evaluate from the bounds of zero to pi over two. So we get one half times. Now when I plug in pi over two for theta, we get pi over two plus one half sine of two pi over two or sine of pi, which is zero. So one half times zero, that will cancel. And then minus, when I plug in zero for theta, we have zero plus one half times sine of zero. Sine of zero is also zero, so that will cancel. And zero plus zero was zero, so that will cancel as well. So all we have left is pi over two times one half. That's just gonna give us the final answer of pi over four. So now for number three, we have the integral from zero to pi of sine to the fourth three t dt. So when we have sine or cosine raised to the fourth power, what I'm gonna do here is rewrite it as sine squared of three t, the entire thing squared. Because now what I can do is use the half angle formula. Once again, sine squared, I'm gonna use t as the variable this time. So sine squared of t is gonna equal one minus cosine of two t over two. But instead of just t, we have sine of three t. So we have to rewrite it as one minus cosine. We're gonna multiply two by three and we get six. So come on, one minus cosine of six t over two, and the entire thing is still squared. So then when I square it, I'm gonna foil the numerator and just square the denominator. So when I foil one minus cosine six t squared, I get one minus two cosine of six t, and then we have plus cosine squared of six t. And then on the denominator, we have two squared, which is four. So now that we have changed sine to the fourth of 3t into this entire thing, I'll put the new integral from zero to pi. Now since one over four is a constant, I'll basically take that outside the integral. So we have one over four times the integral from zero to pi of one minus two cosine of 6t plus cosine squared of 6t, and then we have to add the dt at the end. So when we evaluate, we get one over four times the integral of one with respect to t it's just gonna be t minus integral of two cosine of six t is gonna be two over six or one over three sine of six t. And then we have plus the integral of cosine squared of six t dt. So I'm gonna rewrite that as a separate integral. So cosine squared of six t dt. Since this is cosine squared, I'm gonna to have to use the half angle formula once again. So cosine squared can be written as one plus cosine now we don't have just cosine of t we have cosine of 6t so I'm gonna go ahead and multiply 2 times 6 we get 12 so cosine of 12t over 2 since 1 half is a constant I can take that outside the integral so we have 1 half times the integral of 1 plus cosine of 12t dt so when I evaluate we get 1 half times integral of 1 with respect to t is t plus the integral of cosine 12t with respect to t is going to be 1 over 12 sine of 12t. So now that we have rewritten the integral of cosine squared 6t as this entire thing, I'm gonna go ahead and move that up here. So we have one half times t plus one over 12 sine of 12t. So now before evaluating, I'm actually gonna go ahead and distribute over the one half. So rewriting everything, we have one fourth times t minus one over three sine of 6t and then plus one half t, and then plus one half times one twelfth is one over 24, sine of 12 t. So now we can evaluate from the t bounds of zero to pi. So we get one fourth times, when I plug in pi for t, we get pi minus one third times sine of six pi. Now sine of six pi is the same thing as sine of two pi, that's zero, so zero times one third is zero. We have plus pi times one half, that's pi over two 
plus 1 over 24 times sine of 12 pi. Sine of 12 pi is once again the same thing as sine of 2 pi. Sine of 2 pi is 0, so 0 times 1 over 24 is 0. So now minus, when I plug in 0 for t, now when I plug in 0 for t into this entire thing, we're basically going to get 0 minus 0 plus 0 plus 0. So that's just going to be 0, so that will cancel. And so we'll get those zeros will cancel as well. So for pi plus pi over 2, I can rewrite pi as 2 pi over 2. So 2 pi over 2 plus pi over 2 is 3 pi over 2. So we have 1 over 4 times 3 pi over 2, which gives us the final answer of 3 pi over 8. So now for number 4, we have the integral of tangent squared x dx. Now there isn't necessarily a half angle formula for tangent. So what we can do here, this might look very tricky, but it's actually pretty simple. Tangent squared, remember, using trig identities is secant squared minus 1. So we can rewrite it as the integral of secant squared x minus 1 dx. Now the integral of secant squared is just tangent, because if I derive tangent, we get back to secant squared. So we have tangent of x minus the integral of 1 with respect to x, just x. So the final answer is just going to be tangent x minus x and then plus c. So now for number 5, we have the integral of tangent cubed x secant x dx. Now because we do have a trig function raised to a third power, we can go ahead and rewrite tangent cubed x as tangent squared x times tangent x. So I'm not going to worry about the secant x just yet, I'm just going to go ahead and simplify or rewrite tangent cubed of x. Now tangent squared once again is secant squared x minus 1. We do have the tangent x on the outside, and then I can go ahead and attach that secant x or multiply by secant x. So now realize that if I put this entire thing underneath an integral, if I make u equal to secant x, the derivative of secant x is obviously just going to be secant x tangent x. So du is once again secant x tangent x dx. So then dx equals du over secant x tangent x. So when I make the substitution everything back into the integral, we get the integral of, well secant is our u, so we have u squared minus 1 times tangent x secant x times dx, which is once again equal to du over secant x tangent x. Realize that both of these will cancel, so all we have left is the integral of u squared minus 1 du. The integral of u squared is going to be u cubed over 3, and the integral of 1 with respect to u is just going to be u, so we have minus u. Once again, u is secant x, so I can go ahead and substitute that back in. So we have secant cubed x over 3 minus secant x plus c, and that's our final answer.